night of our 68th annual convention of the New Testament Church of God in St. Vincent, St. Lucia. God indeed has been good to us all these years. And last night, didn't God turn up? Now just turn to the person next to you and say, I wonder what God is going to do tonight. And let me tell you something. If the person next to you normally whispers in your ears, now is a good time to switch seats. Because you don't want any distraction tonight. Amen. Bless God. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. As Minister Mercy Richards come to read God's word to us tonight. God is good. Hallelujah. Minister Richards. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. We reverence him tonight and we give him the glory. We give him the honor and we give him the praise. He deserves a high praise in the house of God. And indeed, we give him praise and thanks. Our scripture lesson is taken from Mark chapter, Saint Mark chapter 16. And I would read from 15 to 18. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have found it, speak some heavenly language in the house of God tonight. Praise the Lord. Here begin it. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with a new tongue. They shall, they, they shall take up serpents. And, they, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to Almighty God. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Minister Richards. The theme of this convention is go, reach, preach, and teach. And this commission was given by Jesus Christ himself to all. No matter who we are, as long as we are born again, as long as we are blood washed, as long as we are called his own. At this time, I want to welcome Minister Hazel and Roberts as she comes to take us to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Please encourage her as she comes. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name. We magnify your name, O oh God. We give you praise that is due unto your name. For you are worthy of all glory, of all honor, and all power. Because you created all things. And for your pleasure they are and were created. Lord, we magnify you this evening. We place you at the highest place. For you are the great high priest. There is none above you. None likened unto you. None to be compared with you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending the first and the last lord we praise your name we bless your name this evening we hallowed your name hallowed be thy name father you are worthy this evening we give you glory we give you honor we praise your mighty name we thank you god for you are sovereign you are holy you are righteous you are awesome. You are excellent. El Shaddai, Adonai. You are our helper. Oh, Father, we give you honor this evening. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done, all that 
you are doing and will continue to do. We thank you for bringing us here another evening, the second day of our national convention. Lord, we thank you for your mercies. We've come thus far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Had it not been for you on our side, where would we be? So we thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We magnify you. We say praise unto your name this evening, Lord. You are excellent. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for giving us journey and mercies. We thank you for bringing us another time where we can lift you up, where we can learn more about you and draw even closer to you. Father, you search the hearts. You know every thought. Even now search us. Know our hearts, know our thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in us. Cleanse us from every sin. Set us free in the name of Jesus. For you are our liberator. Father, you are our purifier. You are the refiner. Refine us, Lord. Purge us. Remove the dross in the name of Jesus. Lord God, when you are done with us, we'll be like pure gold. Purify us, Lord. We surrender our lives to you this evening. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this place. We thank you for what you've already started, God. We look to you with hearts of expectation, for you are a great and mighty God who do great and mighty works. Even now, oh God, I bring everyone that would be ministering here this evening before you, whether it's the worship team, the musician, Father, the one who would be bringing your word. We pray for a fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. Father, let your living water flow over our souls and your Holy Spirit take control. For it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the living God. Even now, we pray for refreshing. We pray, God, that you would enliven us, enlighten us, oh God. Pour out your spirit upon us, oh God. Even as you are commanding us to go, you said tarry until we be endued with power from on high. Pour out your power upon us, oh God. We need more of you, oh God. Let us decrease, God, as you increase. Almighty oh, God, anoint us tonight. Oh, your anointing, it breaks yoke. Break yokes, fetters, strongholds. Break them, Lord, by your mighty power. In the name of Jesus. Father, let us not only be hearers of your word, but let us be doers of your word. So, Lord, when we are done here this evening, let us apply your words to our hearts and our lives. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven we come against every plan of the enemy and we spoil them tonight in the name of jesus so i plead the blood of jesus over this place we plead the blood of jesus the blood of the lamb the blood that shall never lose its power we release the fire of the holy ghost in the name of jesus to consume everything that is not of you god let your perfect will be done in this place tonight and we give you glory for what you're going to do and we give you praise in no other name but the name of jesus praise god hallelujah 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 oh the lord our god is a strong tower the righteous runs into him and are safe hallelujah at this time we are going to invite our praise team as they would usher us before the throne of god in praise and worship last night we heard of reformation the Lord. of transition and revelation i pray we have reformation and transition and revelation in our worship invite or oh, welcome the praise team as they come to do what god will have them to do hallelujah 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 we worship you oh god hallelujah 
You are our Jehovah Jireh, hallelujah. hallelujah. You are our Jehovah Nissi, hallelujah. You are our Jehovah Shalom, we worship you, God. You are our Jehovah Shama, blessed be the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I gave myself away. Oh, I gave myself away. So you can use me. I gave myself away. Hey, I gave myself away. So you can I give myself away. I give myself away. Hey, I give myself away. So you.
for God on the right, we must keep on the firing line. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A few weeks ago, when the West Indies won, all the West Indians rallied and they said, we are a champion. But I'm here to declare tonight that I am a warrior, more than a conqueror, Hallelujah. an overcomer in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going up. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. We are going up. Uh -huh. We're, We're going, going up together. together. we're going to have some presentations 
And so I call Lady Davis, please greet, welcome our first lady, Lady Eleanor Davis. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Truly we are warriors. We are overcomers in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I would like Bishop Urel and Mildred Williams to come forward at this time. Give them a hand of welcome as they come. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Bless the Lord. Praise God. I present this flag to Bishop and Sister Mildred Williams for in recognition of their faithfulness for many years of dedication service to New Testament Church of God in St. Vincent and St. Lucia. We, the members of the New Testament Church of God, really appreciate you all for the hard work what you have done. May God continue to bless you all. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We like Pastor Buddha. We want to give thanks to the New Testament Church of God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. This is my church, and I, I wasn't looking for this. Amen. I, I always tell people I don't know no other church. From since I was six years old, my mother took me to Sunday school, and she said I was dedicated there by Mother Green, but I don't know that. But... I'm there until now. I'm 68. I want to give God thanks. Pastor Buddha, on behalf of the National Ladies Discipleship and all the ladies of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and St. Lucia, we'd like to present this token to you as appreciation for the hard work that you have been doing and make it a habit to come to a convention every year. We cannot repay you for the good things what you have been doing, but only God can repay you. May God continue to bless you as you continue to walk in his vineyard. May God bless you. Praise the Lord. I want to say thank you to the New Testament Church of God, the ladies of the New Testament Church of God, St. Vincent and St. Lucia too. Amen. I give God thanks and praise. Thank you for recognition in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Someone say, give me my roses while I'm alive. Amen. 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 Bless God. It's offering time. Let's welcome no other than our Caribbean field director, Bishop Ishmael Charles. This must be really good. I had a, I had a hard hand all the time. You just give me a nice, soft, 
cool thing and they come to do offering you know <laughs> last night we raised we raised just about three thousand dollars actually it was twenty nine hundred <clears throat> we were short of a hundred dollars less three thousand dollars last night that was good is anybody hear me that was good come on come on clap your hands for Jesus I think every pastor who is interested in seeing their church grow financially must inform their people how the church is doing financially no no y'all don't clap for me there you know no. it is the responsibility of the pastor to literally inform the church of its financial strength so I would bring the church in together where pastor and I would say you know for this season this time we have made X amount of money and when people know what is happening to the money in the church then the integrity and the credibility of both the leader and the church speaks very loudly now y'all didn't clap there again y'all didn't clap there again so I, I kind of fall off the boat no, I'm not the overseer, so you all have to frighten for me. Nobody gonna lose the job, nobody gonna lose the church. But if I was your overseer and you were not doing the things I'm saying that you don't that mean you don't have a church. Y'all didn't, didn't get what I just said. Because I think every leader must be responsible to tell their people what is happening in the church. Not preaching only on Sunday morning, but tell the people you are giving. So in Tartola, we gave just a shot of something, something. I ain't telling y'all how much. That's Tartola. So I, the first Sunday I passed in Tartola was the 2nd of July, 1989. That first Sunday morning, the tithes and the offering was about $1,500. By the time the month ended of July, 1989, it was about three and a half, four thousand dollars 4000 Now, 27 years later, last Sunday morning, I know exactly how much money because it's on my desk. And my board knows. And people knows. Because one of the strength of the church is finances. Amen. Anybody hear me? Amen. So I want you to know that by the time this, this week is finished, this weekend is finished, if we give $10,000, you're going to know how much we give. Amen. Is anybody hear me? Amen. So last night, we were just a couple dollars short of 3000 Am I here to raise money? No. But I'm going to do something tonight. Bishop, I'm going to shift something. This is not in my repertoire. But this was not in yours. So last night we talked about what a, what a beautiful job Pastor Butte and the team have done here to get this building sealed and to stuff. And the last time we were here, I said that. We talked about that last night. We talked about maybe, you know, if you're going to come back here for the first couple of nights, next year this time, there's going to be a big AC unit on the wall and you'll not be fanning in Jesus' name. Because onion and garlics are over. Amen. And we're going to milk and honey. Y'all catch me. Now, the second thing is, I want to do something tonight. Bishop Johnson, I want you to help me. Bishop Posada, I want you to help me. Bishop Hamilton, I want you to help me. When you sow into the leader's life, there's a blessing. Okay, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. You see, you're not accustomed to that. You're not accustomed to that. But I want to do something. I just sense that I want to do something. We got the rest of the week. And nothing. I just sense tonight that I... I Bishop, so you raise the offering. But I want to take this offering tonight in this convention and give the offering to our bishop. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all not ready for this. So, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do. Y'all ain't ready for this. So I'm not going to do that then. Is that okay? See, the secret of life is if you bless the leader, the whole operation be blessed. If you bless the head, so we really should have, last night, I was sitting down this evening, and I said, you know what, I missed something last night. The first service, the first fruit, should have been given to the leader. So what I'm going to do, you can put it in the blog or the newspaper, because some of you didn't vote for him in the last election. So that's a blog, but you can do that. So what I'm going to do, we're going to raise the offering tonight, right? But the first fruit of last night to start the convention is going to go to the bishop. 
So $2,900 is going to go to the bishop from last night. So what I love to do, and, and I do this because you must sow the first seed into the leader. Anybody hear me? And I want you to do that. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, tonight's gift is going to continue for the expenses up. Why are you all looking at me like that so far? See, you're not a customer of blessing your leader. It wouldn't be a problem. The other day I'm sitting in the church and, and I'm sitting there, Bishop Johnson, and the chairman of my board is a commissioner of aviation and he walks up and he says to me, Bishop, you always refuse our blessings. But this morning, go outside, take, take this little bag, walk outside, go down the aisles, turn right. In the pastor's parking slot, there is a new silver bullet. It's fully loaded. It's 2014, whatever it is. He said, here's the key. It's paid for. It's yours. Y'all ain't catch it yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't catch it yet. And I walked out and I said, Lord Jesus. And I just got in there. I was afraid to drive. When you put it in, when you put it in reverse, you see everything behind. He said, Ishmael, bad now, boy. <laughs> you, you know, somebody, you know. My brother in London, they're watching this thing live, so I'll be careful. Everybody watching this all over the, and, and stuff, so I've got to be careful what I say. So I'm getting tweet here now. There's some, somebody saying, Bishop, stop. You know. But, but when you bless the head and the strength of that church you see on TV is because they learn to bless the head. So the first fruit is for the head. Are you ready? The same scripture from last night is contingent on tonight. We are give in the power and the demonstration of the Spirit. So, if you can give, and last night we were not taking Guyanese dollars and Jamaican dollars, and somebody remind me, don't take Titi either, because they're kind of, you know. So, we want Euro, and we want Pongs, we want Americans, and we want your, your EC. Is that right? You see, if you belong to the church, you should be happy when the offering is being given. Some of you don't gone into cold mode. The fire left since I hear. Some of you don't shift long time. I, I, you were singing, I'm on the firing line. Some of you lost the whole fire long time there. So, so. Hallelujah. Come on, be happy. Be joyful. Prince is dead and none of you getting his money. You know? <laughs> you know? And the wall is celebrating. So let's give unto the Lord tonight. I give by, I lead by example. So I want you to give tonight and I want you to give the Lord those of you who can bless the lord we're going to build up for the weekend because sunday is missions offering sunday all the pastors and pastors you pastors if you haven't blessed your bishop for the year and the first lady this is the week to bless your bishop let me say it again if you haven't blessed your bishop i think Every local church, all 22 churches plus St. Lucia should bring an offering and bless the bishop. Amen. When we finish our council meeting next week, we're establishing that throughout the whole Caribbean. One night of every convention belongs to the bishop for the blessing. <laughs> now stay in the Holy Ghost still. Are you going to give? Paul said, when I come to you, I don't come with, with enticing words. I come in love and demonstration. Let's pray. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your gift tonight. We come in the demonstration of the Spirit to bring about your life and your word, your kingdom, in this meeting, tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I am serious. I love to get in trouble for God. I'm serious. I want you to give tonight a great offering. Last night you did well. Let's go above that tonight. Let's give. And somebody give out of all of your wholeheartedness. And God is going to bless you. This convention, I'm just impressed. That your bishop and first lady and team has done such an excellent qualitative planning job. That is the
poorest clap I have ever heard in my life. Let me run up by you again. Which convention you go, you see they're giving people cold towel. It's only happening in first class and American Airlines. And look at the ushers. Look at how they meet the, 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 the people who are coming in. Look at the excellence that the New Testament Church of God has. I'm wasting your time, but look at the on time starting of church. Does anybody hear me? We're not starting church half an hour later and moderator in here. Everybody, I think we should give the Lord a good hand for our bishop. Now what a joy that is. And I want you to bless. Are you ready to give? Let's give. So we do it like last time. Okay, ushers, go ahead and start. Somebody come to the platform. And I'm going to ask all the pastors, all of the pastors, send the message out. The secretary, all the pastors, bring a special gift from your local church for a year gift to the pastor. Give him a special envelope blessing. All 26 churches. Amen. Amen. And you bishops who come in American money, you all don't give no pretty money. Give the green money. <laughs> come on, I want you to give. Are you ready? Give. Give. Ushers, go ahead and let's wait on them. And we, Bishop, I want you to do I want us to do a heading for television each night. Because this week, we are broadcasting on the television. You're going to see this week, this Sunday... The man who's going to preach tonight, I just came from his convention, and he's going to be on. They tape all this stuff like this, and they're going to be on Faith and Truth television all over the Caribbean. And then we're going to bring this convention. So, so when Bishop finish, I want us to do a blessing, and we're going to do it all through the week so we can have headings for each and to bring the programs from here. And we, we are grateful. People are watching us by you stream live all over the world last night they were watching in talks and caicos am i right and they're watching and people are blessed and you i'm really thank god for our leader give the musician you all give you all give praise team pastors you all give pastor mclaren you give that kind of hairstyle but i got money to give because that kind of hairstyle amen amen Y'all, that's, that's my daughter, so y'all don't mess with this, okay? She came from my womb, so I can tell my children anything. She and Pastor Tibbles, them, them 25 cent week, they look good on y'all head, amen. So, <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah. Don't try that, you might get licks, but I could tell them anything, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we giving? Are we giving? I want you to make sure you give. So let's do a great blessing tonight. God is going to grant us a blessing for all that God has done. Amen. He's a great God. He's the only wise God. What a blessing. Amen. And, and, and I'm grateful for the presentation tonight to recognize people who have served in this great church. What a wonderful blessing. Hallelujah. Are we through? Okay. Let's give the Lord a hand for our giving this evening. Bless the Lord. From the Paul of Prayer Ministries in Chester Cottage, New Testament Church of God, we're having a special young lady who, whom God have raised up and given a talent. Please join me and welcome our sister as she comes with the spoken word. Hallelujah. You can continue to give. Bless the Lord. And we serve a living God. He changeth not. 
His ways are past finding out and his understanding is unsearchable. Flashlights and satellites with all their earthly power cannot find, nor can our minds understand the fullness of the creator of us all. Yes, he created us all in his image and likeness, so he loves us all with the fullness of himself, for he is love. He loves us so much that he sacrificed his son for the very wretches that crucified and despised him, so that through his death they might have life forevermore. Well, it's time for me to go. But I'm not leaving, I'm not done. When I said it's time for me to go, I mean it's time for me to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Go and make disciples of all nations. Russians, American, Haitians, Chinese too, Africans, Indians, Vinci's too, but it's not just me. You too, it's time for us to go. It's time for us to go. Go, go, go everywhere. Tell everyone about the love of God and how he sent his son to die for our sins. How he sent his son to die for our sins and how he died and he rose again so that we might have life. Oh, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Thus says the Lord, yet we give ration to and starve those that are yearning to be touched by the love of God. Can we see? People need the Lord. And he's made provision for everyone. Let the wicked turn from his way and let the unrighteous man forget his thoughts. Let him return to God and he will have mercy on him. And return to our Lord for he will abundantly pardon. For those of us building bulwarks as snares for the lost, we better repent and start exalting Christ we better stop hailing denominations and playing church and start to exalt Christ for he has declared the power of his word and every opposing argument shall be shut down thus says the Lord so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish what I please it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it the word became flesh and the law of love was made manifest through this living word. God has spoken. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall go forth into singing before you. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress tree. Instead of the bear shall come up the myrtle tree. See, the gospel is not about condemnation but salvation. Not about riches, but about rivers of living water, which is the gift of the Spirit when we receive the Savior. So elders, dear elders, stop despising the youth. <laughs> Encourage, do not encounter. Edify and watch us encounter Christ. We have been called, so don't block the line. And children, honor your parents. And don't look down on the elders because we feel that we have the wealth of information at the touch of our fingertips. We don't know it all. But I believe that if we will all stand in the gap, that we could claim this broken, blessed land for the Savior. Hmm. It's not our place to judge each other. It is our duty to love each other. And when we love, we'll go, because love is an action word. And when we go, in the glory of God, the glory will reach out and reel in the catch. Let's be fishers of men. <laughs> but we won't eat the fish. We'll teach the fish. <laughs> Not how to be committed to religion. Not to be religious junkies. <laughs> but to have relationship with Christ. And to serve the church. And prepare them to also be fishers of men. Because we've got to move now. People need the Lord.
I said people need the Lord. So it's time for us to go. Go, go, go everywhere. Tell everyone about the love of God and how he sent his son to die for our sins. And how he died and he rose again so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Bless God. The only thing that I could say is amen. 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 At this time, we are going to welcome our district overseers who are present to come and give one minute greeting. One minute greeting. District overseers who are present. Welcome the district overseer of Kingston, Bishop Cledwin Cato. Bless the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. God has been good. I greet you tonight from the Kingston district and I want to give this special greeting to every one of you who are here tonight. All the bishops and the pastors, all the brothers and sisters who are here tonight. I want to thank you all those who have supported us in the Kingston district. We, three years ago, we had many challenges. And God has started the Reformation. I know tonight there are some Joshua's. But I want to say to you tonight that there are some Caleb's also. And the Caleb's and the Joshua's will go together and the Reformation will, will go to transition. And we will all do what God has called us to do. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Representing Bishop Hank Williams of the Diamonds District is Pastor Tibbles. Praise the Lord, everybody. I speak like my father. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Good night. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. On behalf of Bishop Hank Williams, who is not well, we greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. And we, we are happy to be in this great convention where the Spirit of the Lord is moving. God is doing great in our district. It's a place where the anointing is. A district where we are moving by the cutting edge of ministry, bringing in a season of wonders and miracles last easter sunday morning we at the georgetown we took to the street of the georgetown road to dixon we built some cross some crosses and um, as we push those crosses in the air and we begin to pray and preach the power of God just move through the area of Georgetown straight in Dixon and there's a young lady who God is really raising up she preached the gospel in Dixon and this is a place where God is going to reign because we're going to set up the kingdom of God right in Dixon we had a district baptism also we had a crusade and God is doing great things just one more thing I want to say for every for every <laughs> demonic system there is a kingdom model driven by an apostolic anointing to conquer and replace the demonic system god bless you amen bishop scott from the lomans district glory to god somebody praise god in case you're wonder, wondering why I'm not here, I'm outside taking care of business, Amen. looking after your vehicles while you're worshiping and enjoying the presence of Almighty God. Somebody praise God. Amen. God is great, awesome, wonderful, mighty. And so I greet you from the Lomans district. Well, I almost say 
the place where divinity touches humanity because that's how I <laughs> That's how I, I um, introduce, you know, the Beque Church, the place where divinity touches humanity. Hallelujah. People of God, we are winning. In fact, we are winners already. Amen. Glory to God. Crowns and thrones may perish. Kingdoms rise and wane. But the church of Jesus Christ, constant will remain. And gates of hell can never against that church prevail. We have Christ's own promise that cannot fail. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Buddha of, from St. Lucia. Please welcome Pastor Buddha as she comes. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Boswell Tutmoon Seveser. Good night to every Vincentian. Amen. Amen. Bonsoir. I give God thanks and praise for being here another year, sparing my life. It's good to be alive, and it's only God who can keep us alive. So I want to say thank you. I give honor to God and to our field director, Bishop Ishmael Charles, our administrative bishop, Wendell Davis, and Lady Eleanor Davis, and all God's wonderful people, men and women, and to the congregation, I want to let you know that God is blessing us in St. Lucia. Amen. He's the same God, the same Vincentian God is the St. Lucian God. And he remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. I need to extend a special greeting from... Pastor Blas, I know you have not seen him or maybe you have heard of him, but it's a new church affiliated with New Testament, Church of God in Viewfort. And Pastor Blas had been ill and he's in the U.S. undergoing treatment. And he asked me specifically to greet you for him. And please pray for him that he would receive his healing that one of these days you will be able to see him. We also have a new church started in La Puente. Um, I know you don't understand that name, it's Patwa, but it's L-A-P-O-I-N-T. That's where Pastor Francis Cox lives and this church is being pastored by Pastor Francis Cox. So pray for us as we continue to do the same for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And representing the Chateaubelair district is Pastor Glevo Burke. She's representing Bishop Dan Richards, the district overseer. Thank you, Pastor Porter. Good evening, everyone. We are all aware that Bishop Richards has not been too well over the past week. Our weeks, our prayers are with him. And we know had he been here, he would have been dancing around and rejoicing because he is very fond of that. So I stand to represent the Chateaubriand District. I bring you greetings from the four churches. We are fighting a good fight. And we never lose our battles. We will fight and we will win. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are, help me now, mighty to God to the pulling down of stronghold. God bless you in Jesus' name. I thank you. Bless the Lord. And with us tonight is our very own Bishop Sonny Williams and Sister Maureen Williams. And so I'm going to ask Bishop Williams to come and to greet the convention. Thank you, thank you. Good night. It's, it's rather wonderful. To be here tonight 
And I haven't seen some of my esteemed colleagues for a long time. So it's a wonderful thing to be in familiar places. I think it was Pastor Porter, uh, he had the audacity some time ago. I was ministering to the men at, at Belair and he introduced me as a, a New Testament Church of God pastor <laughs> who worships at Glad Tidings Tabernacle. No problem at all with that one. But God is good. And I thank God for the work that he continues to do among you. And I have a challenge. And I have taken on this challenge everywhere I go in St. Vincent. To challenge the church of Jesus Christ about our mission to young people. Your theme said go, reach, preach, and teach. On my way here, the, I think it's the final day when secondary school children go home. And those of you who are coming from this side. That's your mission. I don't know if you passed through town when there was inter-school sports. You saw it. And I wonder what you saw. Did it trouble you? Because... You see, I am challenging churches around this nation because on a Friday, Heritage Square is pumping. Hundreds of young people from everywhere in the country. But if you visit churches and visit their youth group, you have some half dead youth groups. You see, church is one thing that when we get together like this, we feel we have a done deal. Let's challenge ourselves as we go away from this convention. That we have a responsibility to reach, to preach, to teach. There are hundreds of young people out there without Jesus Christ drifting. God bless you. Thanks for having me. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, I'm going to welcome our field director, Bishop Charles, who will introduce our speaker for tonight. Please welcome Bishop Charles. What a wonderful blessing this is. To be home. I mean, this is home for me. There's some people who call me when I get there and say, this is your home, but this is the real home. And I'm just glad to be home, just to be a servant. And I want to honor our bishop, Bishop and Lady Davis tonight in this house, all of the members of the National Executive Council, um, the other bishops that are here from Guyana, um, and Tuxen and Caicos, and the new bishop from Barbados um, and, and all of the stuff, but what a joy. What a joy to be here. Bishop Sonny, good to see you and your wife. It's a blessing. Very good to see you. Uh, and the joy is mine this evening. Over the past three years, three and a half years, I've been serving in this position and it's not been easy. This time last week I was sitting in a I was preaching this time last week in Lusaka, Zambia. I closed out the All-African Leaders Summit. 
And the general overseer was there, the general director of all missions was there. You know what he said to me? He said to me, Ishmael, all of the trouble you have gone through for the past three and a half years, how did you get the kind of approval and assessment from the leadership of the Caribbean? He said, you have a 9.5 rating percent from all of the Caribbean. And for what you have gone through last year, you out of 10, 9.5 out of 10. As a matter of fact, he said, just the highest thing. And he said, out of all you have gone through. But one of the things that the Lord has done, especially the last past two years, is the transition of leadership. And those leaders are not only guys who are fighting for position. These are visionaries. Visionaries. So they can see at the top of the mountain. And I got four of them here tonight. I got four of them here tonight in that transition period. That have really labored with me. That have actually took the mantle and started. And we've been running faster than Usain Bolt. And God has been blessing the Caribbean for what Passard has done and Diane has done in Guyana over the last couple of years is tremendous. I discussed some of this stuff last night. Bishop Hamilton, we just gave Tokes and Caicos autonomy from the Bahamas. And he took a difficult situation. And even last time we were driving in tonight, and he said he started a new church not too long ago. And these are men with vision. That are turning things around. Bishop Moses Johnson is going to speak to us this evening. Is the overseer of the Bahamas. And a young man. That have pastored the church. That have led a church for a number of years. Has a tremendous family. His wife, Sister Cynthia. Tremendous lady. And the joy of serving with these men. Have been one of my greatest admiration. To watch them lead the churches in this time. And I'm glad that these are young men that are bringing such power and joy to the kingdom of God. And, and I've asked him to come and just share and be here in this convention. He leaves tomorrow. But what you're seeing is a networking of the body of Christ. This is not anybody trying to outdo anybody. All of us would have been sitting here and listening to Bishop Davis preach without us feeling anything. So what we just we just network. So every convention next next month, Bishop David is going to to talk some Caicos, and we're gonna be there. And and Bishop Johnson have to go because that used to be their baby. So you have to go and carry an offering for Bishop Thing, you know. Um, so Bishop Davis is the speaker in talks and Caicos um, convention coming up. And and you you we see that kind of networking. And, and what God is doing across the region is one of the most marvelous things. Now the Caribbean has now 3,900 and about 29 churches. I'm responsible for those 70 churches, less 4,000. And what 18 overseers, we got four of them here tonight. And that's a strong support. Bishop Johnson is a great leader, a great visionary. I just got back from the Bahamas and what used to be a little center, he has transposed that thing into an artifact that is going to be a unique blessing. And what a blessing this man has taken on the mantle from John Humes who was here. John Humes was here during your installation, I think. John Humes died about a year ago and we buried John Humes and this is the man who picked up the mantle from John Humes and ever since this man has been racing across the Bahamas every district he has visited have major conventions and God is doing a wonderful thing would you stand tonight let's stand tonight and for the first time in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and St. Lucia I want you to receive one of God's visionaries one of God's choice visionaries God has raised up this man Last night he said something that blew me away. I'm going to say it when I get back to Tartola. You all know if you're a part-time Christian, you can't deal with a full-time devil. You know, understand? So that's my message sometime coming up soon, you know. So, but, but what a blessing. Would you appreciate our speaker for this evening, Bishop Moses Johnson. Come on, lift your hands. Let's praise the Lord. Praise him another time. Praise and praise him another time. Praise now just before you take your seat, we have to do a road check. 
Attitude check. Now look at the person who's sitting around you and ask your neighbor next to you, neighbor, neighbor. are you a worshiper? Now, if, 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 if the answer is yes, you're in the right seat. If the answer is no, tell them move now. Come on, give the Lord, give the Lord a hand clap in this place. Anybody came to worship God? Anybody came to magnify God? Anybody came to lift up the name of Jesus? Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 You may be seated in this, in this place. God is a good God. His name is worthy to be praised. Well, it is just wonderful to be in St. Vincent. God is a good God. It's my first time here and I'm enjoying the island. I want to thank God for the driver today that took us on a tour amen thank god for the driver he's a good driver i tell you with all those curves and curves and curves my head was spinning but god is a good god amen y'all need good drivers in st vincent but i'm delighted to be here i want to give my respect to our field director a great man of God that is taking this great Caribbean to another level. And let's hear it for Bishop Ishmael Childs. Thank God for this gift to the church of God. Bishop Davis and his wife, as I look around and I'm impressed by the work that is happening here in St. Vincent. And you ought to appreciate what God has given you and let's hear it for Bishop and Sister Davis. To all the other pastors and ministers and district overseer on this, distri on this district. And uh, I pray that God will strengthen you and bless you. I want to thank God for all those overseers that have come. From Turks and Caicos, Bishop Hamilton. From Guyana, Bishop and, and, and Sister Prasad. And of course from Barbados and from wherever you're from tonight. It is just wonderful to be here. And because we are live streaming, and I believe that my family back in the Bahamas, they're watching what is happening here in St. Vincent tonight. I just want to say hello to my lovely wife. Because on May 1st, we will celebrate 34 years of marital bliss. And God is a good God. And amen. And every day I'm just loving up more and more and more. Isn't God a good God? And so tonight, we've come to hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen? It is not so much the length of the message, but it's the strength of the message. So I don't need two hours to preach to you. I can get across my message in 25 minutes to victory. Isn't God a good God? Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. He's not a long-winded preacher. I am not going to make you happy twice. Happy that I stood up and happy that I sat down. But the spirit of the Lord is in this place. Before I take my text, there's a story in the Bible where Jesus went in the temple and used a whip. And you wondered why Jesus used a whip in the temple? Because the people in the temple had some doves in a cage. Now what Jesus was trying to say, if you want to worship me, you cannot lock up the doves in the cage. Preacher, what are you saying? The doves represent the Holy Spirit. In some of our churches, the doves are still in the cage. I came to St. Vincent tonight to loose the doves and let them out of the cage because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and He has anointed me to preach the gospel. Are there any worshipers in the place tonight? Are there any worshipers in the place tonight? Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Let's get to the word. In the book of St. John. And thank God for your theme. Reach, preach, teach. Bring them in. Build them up. Send them out. That's in essence what the church is all about. Bring them in. Build them up. Send them out. We've been doing a good job in bringing them in. We've been doing a good job in sending them out. But there's a little missing part in the middle there. We've not been really building them up. I've been a youth pastor for over 16 years. Prior to becoming senior pastor. And it's very important to have training ground. The young lady that gave this speech tonight. Just come here for a second. Give her a hand. I think she's still in the, still in the audience. The one thing we must do is when we see talent, it we must harness it. Come right up. Come give another round of applause. This is my first time seeing you. But I want to speak blessings upon you. There is a special spirit that God has put within you. And that spirit, God is going to bring it out. And this minister just want to be a part of what God is going to do in your life. And years from now, you're going to remember exactly what I'm saying to you. That God is going to touch you in a magnificent way. And you're going to be one of the greatest evangelists the church of God has ever seen. I come against every force and everything that seeks to destroy. And I speak blessings upon your life. God will bless you. And every door that's been closed, God is getting ready to open up another door. Listen, stop looking at the closed doors. Look down the hall and see that one door was closed, but six doors are now open. God is making a way out of no way. And I speak blessings upon your life. And when I bless people, I don't just speak blessings. You're going to remember this day. As a man of God, I have just made an investment into your life. And watch God bless you. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Somebody shall praise the Lord. If we want our young people to succeed, we've got to stop talking and do something about it. This is the church of the day. And if I don't say another word, I just preach. Hallelujah. The book of John chapter 5. Verse 1. Says and after this. Oh, I feel God in this place tonight. There was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. That day was a Sabbath. Now there in Jerusalem by the sheep pool, by the sheep gate a pool, which is in the Hebrew called Potesta, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude, somebody say sick people. Somebody say they were blind. They were lame. They were paralyzed. But hallelujah, the Bible says they were waiting for the moving of the water. Turn to your neighbor and say, the water is going to move tonight. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. And whoever stepped in first Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. I'm, so sorry, I'm so sorry, but I'm stepping in front of you tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. The word says, whoever, whoever stepped in first, 
after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there, had an infirmity for 38 years. 38 years, my God. And there's some folks who've been in the church for a long time. It doesn't mean that the healing is not there. It doesn't mean deliverance is not there. They're just simply finding excuses. Hallelujah. Certain man, 38 years. Jesus saw him lying there. Knew he had already been in this condition a long time. He said unto him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. Now, if this man was in the Bahamas and we said, do you want to be made well? And he said, I have no man to put me in. Our response would be, I didn't ask you that. Isn't God a good God? God has been asking some of you some questions and you already rehearse what you're going to say. You've got your poem ready to repeat to whatever God is going to say. But there is deliverance in the house tonight. Hallelujah. And so, says, while I'm coming, another step before me. Turn to your neighbor and say, not tonight. Jesus said unto him, rise, take up your bed. And walk and immediately somebody say immediately. immediately immediately the man was made well took up his bed and walk may the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight oh God you are my strength and my redeemer let your word go forth with power in the precious name of Jesus let the church say amen let the church say amen. amen. There are about six points that I want to leave with you tonight. And they're going to come in twos and so there's going to be about really about three. And so the first point I want to leave with you is that in this story there is a setting. Somebody say there is a setting. And there is a situation. Secondly, there is the sick, but there is also a solution. And thirdly, there is the Savior who gives salvation. When I look at this story, there lay a great multitude of sick folk. The word great multitude indicate that this place had a great reputation. Persons heard that this place had made a name for itself. And so it was known for its title. The word Bethsaida means house of mercy. I'm believing tonight that every church ought to be a Bethsaida church. A house of of mercy it was known for its troubling it wasn't an elegant place but it was exciting somebody shout praise Lord in this place it was not a classy place but it was a cleansing place it was not a pious place but it was a powerful place it was not a decorated place but it was a divine place. It was a harbor for the physically maimed. It was not a place to trade kindness for compliments. It was a place to trade crutches for confidence. It was not a place to trade a pat on the back. It was a place where you got favors. It was a place to trade the hiding for the healing. Beds for blessing leaping and limping for leaping we will need the water to be trouble in our churches so that sick people will come and not leave until they are healed there was a time in the church 
If you came to church hurting, you left with the healing of God. There was a lame man that was by the gate beautiful and saw Peter, James, and John. And he said, give me some money. But they said, I don't have any money. But such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. God is still speaking to the church today. It's time for the church to rise up. This place had some sick people. They were diseased. Bible says the man was impotent. In other words, to put it very, very simple, the man had some parts of his body that was not working. Things was not going well. And every time the angel would come down and trouble the water, he would say, somebody steps in the front of me. Jesus said, do you want to be healed? Anything could have been wrong with this man. But this was a matter for Jesus to handle. And the Bible says his dilemma was not so much his disease as I understand it. But I understand that if you're going to get healed, you can't be too far from where the Lord is. Are you hearing me tonight? And so the church must understand that when we come to church, and my topic tonight is simply this. You can have it if you really want it. You can have it if you really want it. There's some folks tonight who will not even wait until the message is over. Because in our churches, we wait until somebody else come to the altar. We don't ever want to be first. Because they're going to say something is wrong with us. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, stop worrying about people. If you need a blessing from the Lord, you got to be like a woman when she's ready to give birth. Some of you ain't afraid. Generally speaking, you like to keep on all your clothes. But when you feel that baby is coming, You don't care who's looking. You don't care who's around. You say to the midwife or to the doctor, get this out of here. I came by New Testament tonight to find some people who don't care about the situation, who don't care where you are, who don't care who's around you. You are ready to give birth. Church folks must stop acting stuck up. God can't deal with stuck up people. God want to church people to be real. If you really want it, you can get it tonight. God is in the house. Oh yeah. His disease was there. But he understood he needed Jesus because you see you can be here tonight sitting among all of us and still be lonely but when you have Jesus there's a song that we used to sing there are days I'd like to be all alone with Christ my Lord and I can tell him I say I can tell him all my troubles I can be on an island with nobody around me just me and Jesus but Jesus makes me happy Jesus makes me happy all the day long oh yeah church 
I tell you tonight that Allah is a fraud. Buddha is a fake. I'm not going to say anything about the Pope. God bless him. The one thing I know about the Virgin Mary is that she did not remain a virgin. Isn't God a good God? Muhammad was an imposter. Confuses died confused. But I serve the all time. Undefeated, undisputed, champion of love. He is Jesus. I say he is Jesus. He's the bread of life. He's my bright and morning star. He's my chosen one. He's my comforter. He's my commander. He's my deliverer. He's my door and he's my dwelling place. Can I preach just a while? He's Emmanuel. He's the elect one. He's the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. He's the God almighty. He's the great shepherd. He's the high priest. He's the head of the church. He's the horn of salvation. He's my intercessor. He is the great I am. He's the image of God. He's my everything. He's my genesis. He's my revelation. He's my alpha, my omega. If you understand, if you understand who God is, you'll get it tonight. In the year, King Uzziah died. Says, I saw the Lord. He was high, lifted up. His strain filled the temple. But what I like about this story, Isaiah said, Holy, holy, holy. Let's stop right there. Bishop Charles, there ain't no other place in the Bible where it says holy, holy, holy. So I checked it out. Why are they giving this emphasis? And I found out that in the Hebrew and Greek, every time you repeat a word, it becomes a little, it gives a little bit more meaning to what you want to say. Bishop Passad may say to his lovely wife, Honey, I love you. But Bishop Charles, being the man that I know he is, he would say to Sister Patricia, Honey, I really, really, really love you. Now, Sister Basad may respond when he says, I love you. But when Bishop Charles says, I really, really, really love you, I want you to understand what Isaiah was trying to say. In Isaiah chapter 6, when he says, Holy, 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 Jesus help me tonight. Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts. Listen. When you see God. For who he is. He responds. To your need. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. There's no time to play cute. Oh God. This Jesus that troubled the water had a personality because he was a great physician. When Jesus went to Jerusalem, he didn't look for fame or fortune. He went to the hospitals and not the palaces. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. He didn't go looking for fortune. He went to preach the word of God. He surrounded himself with the forsaken. He did not go to the prosperous. 
he went to the poor. He did not go to the perfect. He went to those who were not perfect. He looked for the perverted. Didn't go looking for the lovely. He looked for the lowly. His perception was, if I can help somebody as I travel along, then my living shall not be in vain. You can have it if you really want it. It's yours tonight. I say it's yours tonight. Bishop Charles, the day and times in which we live, when you now ask someone to speak in your church, they no longer say, give me the date and time. They want to know how many members your church have. What kind of income do you have? How much people are going to be in the meeting? And you need a $5,000 down payment before they make up their mind to come and preach. And so they want to know what is the remuneration going to be like before they preach. Will I come to mess up that view tonight? The gospel of Jesus Christ is not up for prostitution. We will not prostitute the gospel. This is the great gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus was crucified. Jesus died. He's no longer in the tomb. When preachers preach the gospel, Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw. I will draw. Stop trying to draw people. Lift up Jesus. Lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. Numbers are important. But don't let the numbers baffle you. When you lift up Jesus, people will follow you. But there are too many people. Instead of worshiping the creator, they worship the creature. I came tonight to let New Testament know if you want God to bless you, lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus provided for this man instant healing. Listen, there's no need to wait for 38 years. This man waited because he had a whole lot of excuses. Have you ever asked someone to be a Sunday school teacher? And they say, I can't make it because I got to cook before I go to church. My husband has this problem. My wife has this problem. I can't make it on time. Things are going wrong. I want you to put up on this board for me, Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. If somebody's at the screen, you can find it, Luke 10 and 19. But listen, listen, St. Vincent, we must stop finding excuses. When we go to our secular job, we show up on time. Are you hearing me? We show up on time. On Friday, we are looking for our pay. We're looking for our boss to bless us in a magnificent way. But when it comes to church, we feel like anything will do. I came to remind you that excellence must come back to the church. The things of God must be more important than we take them to be. When it comes to the church, excellence must stand out. Everything that we do for God, we can't just throw it together. The work of God requires excellence. Luke 10 and 19 simply says, listen, don't rejoice because some demons and devils respond to you. But the end part of that word says, rejoice, rejoice because your name, oh hallelujah, 
your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If all else fail, know that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. Give him praise and glory in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. This man had his back on his bed. When Jesus showed up, oh, hallelujah, the bed was now on his back. Listen, there's some things on your back. But Jesus said, lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset you. And let's run this race. Let me just stop right there. Some people think every weight is a sin. No. But the Bible says, lay aside every and so if the Bible says there's some weights and there are sins, it, it, it is distinguishing the fact that some weights are not really sin. There's some things that wouldn't send you to hell, but it'll take away your joy. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? And we got to be careful to decipher what is holding us back. And you know why the Bible wants you to lay aside every weight? Look at an athlete when they begin to run. They don't run in like how we come to church. If I was going to run tonight, if I had challenged Bishop Charles to a 400 meter, I'd probably leave him half a lap around the track. But I will not be running how I am dressed tonight. I will dress down. I will get light. Put on my sprints so that nothing will hold me back. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, get light. And you know why some of us are so heavy? Because some of us still get anger, still got malice, still got jealousy, still too competitive. Jealous of this one, jealous of the other one. And some church people are manipulators. Some of you will manipulate the pastor if he lets you. And pastors, pastors, preach the word in season and out of season. And if they pay the tithes, thank God. And if they try to hold back their tithes because you reprimand them, God will find someone who will double it. This spirit of intimidation is killing the church. People trying to intimidate leaders. You don't know who I am? Well, I'm a child of the king. I stand in holiness. I stand in righteousness. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us. If God be for us. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, see if I can bring the ship home. We don't need to preach gossip. We don't need to preach from the newspaper. The Bible is too huge to preach foolishness. The young people today will not sit back and listen to you talk about who hates you and who don't like you listen mr big stuff who do you think you are hallelujah when the lord is with me he walks with me talks with me and tells me i am his own when the lord is with you a thousand shall fall over here 10,000 shall fall over there but the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear Jesus. 
Jesus. Those that the Lord had rescued will return. They will come and desire singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy shall overtake you. And sorrows and sighing will have to flee. He gave it power unto the faint. To them that have no might, he increased their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young lion, can I preach just a while, shall utterly fall. But they, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagle. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not fade. Therefore the Redeemer of the Lord shall return and come with singing and to Zion. Everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow will have to flee. But that's not all. Nay, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. Can I preach just a while? Through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. I am persuaded. I am persuaded. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I declare tonight the sympathizing Jesus is in the building. And if you want deliverance, it's yours tonight. If you are oppressed, deliverance is here. If you're cast down, deliverance is here. You can have it. You can have it. You can have it if you really want it. Listen. The most unselfish one letter word is I. When Nebuchadnezzar starts saying, this is what I did, I built, I did this. Leaders must, leaders must understand, it's not about us. And we must be careful how we stand up and say, this is my church. Until when your season is over, you're still saying, it's my church. Until you're still shaking like a leaf in a hurricane. But the power is long gone. Christian people don't like change. The only person that likes change is a baby with a red diaper. But when your season is over, because seasons come and seasons go. And if you're smart, you'll know how to hold them, how to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. There's some folks who didn't walk away. Now it's time to run like hell. The most satisfying two-letter word is we. Use it. It's all about us. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about us. Tell your neighbor and say, we are one. We are one. 
Oh God, I got to bring the ship home. But we don't act that way sometimes. Some of the worst hurt that you can get is when church people stab you. Listen. When your enemy stab you, they stab you, pull it out, and run. When church people stab you, stand up, my brother. They don't look in your face because they can't look in your face. When the enemy stab you, they do like this and run. When church people stab you, they do like this. In other words, before they pull it out, they want to make sure they really hurt you. But I've come to remind you, God is saying that peace, tranquility, must come back to the church. Before deliverance can happen, we must get together. They were in one accord, in one place on Pentecost, before it suddenly happened. Oh God. Bishop, I'm bringing the ship home now. I'm in the harbor. I'm waiting for them to put the light on. The most poisonous three letter word is ego. Kill it. Ego. You don't know who I am. You know who my daddy was. I've been in this church for 55 years. And they like to get up and testify. I've been in the way a long time. And that's true. You've been in the way. <laughs> ego. We allow our ego to get in the way of God. A gentleman was told to follow the preacher to a restaurant. The gentleman said, no, give me the directions. I'll find my way. The preacher said, no, follow me. So the gentleman said, why? The preacher said, listen, if I give you the direction, you can find your own way. But if you follow me, you got to go my way. God is saying, follow me. I have the directions. Some of us are saying, God, give me the directions so I can do it my way. Get rid of that big ego. Listen, God want to bless some of you. God said to five men, go out, pick up some stones, put them, put them in your pocket. You know what happened? Some of those men ran out pick up one stone put it in their pocket see see you are who you are because of your mentality and how you think and how you see things if you see a big vision god would allow you to accomplish it when these men got to where god wanted them to go god said i have done a transformation the stones that you pick up take them out your pocket now and when they look at them Every stone they pick up became a diamond. God is taking you through some rough parts. But when it is all over, God is going to say, put your hand in your pocket and pull out what I asked you to put there. And behold, yea, do I walk through the valley? Shadow of death. I'll fear no evil because when I come out on the other side if God take me to it God will bring me through it yeah. gotta hasten on the most used four letter word is love value it gotta love one another love is of God God is love. How can you say you love me? 
and then you steam me for breakfast fry me for lunch and boil me for dinner you know why a lot of young people upset with the church not because of their pastor but because of their parents who sit down in the front of them and chew up the pastor Tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, they don't like the bishop no more. The most pleasing five-letter word is smile. Keep it. Smile, man. If I look at some people in church, all my joy will be sap. Everything that God has done for me will leave. That's why I ask you to check your rope. Sit by people who like to worship. Look here. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you ain't going to stop this party tonight. I know some of y'all like to act cute. But I wasn't always like I am. I used to go to party. And on Friday night, I didn't have to know who was having the party. I just jump in my car and drive around and listen for the music. It didn't care who boy day it was or who was celebrating. As far as I was concerned, I was going to have a party. And I'll dance till 6 a.m. in the morning. But the one good thing about me is that I always ended up in Sunday school. Even in the bad things that I was doing, God had his hand on my life. But when I used to party, I would dance all night. Sometimes on a Sunday, when we see 1 o'clock, after about 2 hours, we get upset. We ready to go home. But you never used to go night clubbing. And some of y'all still going night clubbing. You stay out all night. You dance till the morning. You sweaty up yourself. And you don't worry about it. What needs to come back to the church is a good old Pentecostal blessing in the church. Where you roll under the bench and jump over the bench and give God the glory and sweat out your weave and fall on the floor and mess up your dress. But you want to praise him. You want to magnify him. You can have it. You can have it. You can have it. Jesus. Jesus. The fastest spreading six letter word is Roma. Ignore it. Half of the things people say about church people ain't true. But you heard it and it sound good. And so you spread it. And by the time the message get to the seventh person, the message was, I saw a pastor downtown. The second person, I saw a pastor downtown standing by the bus. The third person, I saw a pastor downtown standing by the bus. And a beautiful lady was standing next to him. And by the time it get to the seventh person, pastor already commit fornication and pastor didn't do a single thing. Squash the rumor! If you must whisper, whisper a prayer. The hardest working seven letter word is success. Let's strive to achieve it. The most enviable eight letter word is jealousy. Distance yourself from it. So what? God bless me? Rejoice with me. When God bless you, I rejoice with you. Too much jealousy in the church. When God promotes somebody, rejoice. Because if you rejoice with me today, tomorrow I shall rejoice with you. The most powerful nine letter word is confidence. Trust it and acquire it. In our story tonight, see this man 
by the pool for 38 years. But even when Jesus said, will thou be made whole? He's now finding excuses. So every time I try to step, someone steps before me. What is your excuse tonight? What is your excuse? Some of you are hurting tonight. Some of you want deliverance. Everybody standing. I dare you. I dare you. Not to wait for someone to step in the front of you. Listen to me very good. If you want to remain right where you are, remain where you are. If you want God to bless you, step out your seat. Step out your seat. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. You can have it if you really want it. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? It can be yours tonight. That man finally got his deliverance. But you don't need to wait 38 years. You don't need to wait 30 years or even 8 years. It is yours for the asking tonight. Lift your hands towards heaven. Come on, lift your hands towards heaven. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I feel his presence in this place tonight. I feel his presence in this place tonight. And even before I pray, lift your hands and begin to magnify him. Come on, come on, begin to magnify him. Remember, it is your deliverance that you want. Come on, begin to magnify him. All over this building, call upon his name. All over this building, call upon his name. Hallelujah. 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 Call upon his name. Come on, call upon his name. Call upon his name. Call upon his name. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Father in Jesus' name. I ask the pastors to join me. All the pastors and leaders just stand right here. Let's make a line right here. I want you to reach your hand. Reach your hand towards these people tonight. For the lack of space, I can't really work like I want to, but God can still do it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask these pastors to pray with me. Deliverance will come in the name of Jesus. Everybody praying right now. Close your eyes with me. Close your eyes with me. Father, in Jesus' name, we your people stand tonight. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on your people. Anoint them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. God, they have come tonight with many needs. But your word declare whatsoever things we desire when we pray. If we can believe them, we can have them right now in the name of Jesus. Send your blessing. Send your anointing. Send your power. Send your deliverance among your people. I declare deliverance in the name of Jesus. God, you promise you will never leave us nor forsake us. Touch them now in the name of Jesus. Come on, call upon his name. Call upon his name.
Father, we thank you. For your word clearly told us that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. And we recognize we need you tonight. Yes, we want it. And so we come to receive it. As we leave this house tonight, hallelujah, may we leave with a fresh yawning and, and longing to, to make a difference in the life of this country. That we're going to receive from you tonight and we're going to impart to those dying out in this world in this country of ours that as these young people stand at this altar tonight God mindful of what they have heard burdened by what they would have seen with a fresh desire to go and reach someone we no longer be just hearers but we'd be doers doers to turn this country upside down doers to empty heritage square that's filled with revelers and as a cesspool of sin that will rescue those who are dying because we who wanted it and received it no one won't share it thank you for tonight and as we go God may we not just go and say we have experienced a great time but may we go with a fresh burden and all that we would have heard the transitioning and and now tonight we want it and we come to receive it because we want to share it. Well, thank you for your word and thank you for us being here tonight. In Jesus' name. Tomorrow at 9.30 we're going to be back here for leadership seminars and session. Bishop Johnson is leaving early in the morning to go back home via Trinidad. We want to pray God's blessing upon him. Oh, we're going to be here tomorrow at 9.30. Somebody asked last night who maybe is not a member of the New Testament. If they can come, I say certainly be a part of what we're doing by the grace of God. And Sunday morning at 9.30, it's going to be at Annisville Plainfield and 9.30 to 12.30. And then from 2 until 4, we close out our convention 2016. But please stay in your seat. Let's, let's continue in the spirit of excellence, the spirit of if God is spirit at what God is doing and let's allow our guests to exit this hall and then we can have fellowship and, and go so God bless you as you just take your place away from the aisles and we ask our guests who are ready to leave to exit to go where the ushers will take them and I'll see the rest of you tomorrow at 9.30 God bless you get home safe under the anointing of the grace of God and let's pull all this standing on us veil on Sunday for a great time of worship and fellowship and ordination God bless you tonight just one quick announcement I want to thank somebody in the audience who have given a hundred dollars to close off last night's offering to make it three thousand dollars is that wonderful let's give the lord a praise and tonight the offering we have given have crossed over another three thousand dollars so we are grateful